college meeting of Ohio County Fiscal Court to order uh, on this uh, 22nd day of October 2024 at 5 p.m. I want to ask uh, our jailer, Landon Spurlock, to lead us in a prayer and a place of flag. All right, everybody, bow your heads. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, please uh, heal and guide our country. Please heal and guide uh, this fiscal court to make better decisions, responsible decisions for our county, guide our county in the right direction. Uh, please be with everyone here tonight and have, have, let everybody have a safe uh, travel home. Dear Lord, thank you for everything you do. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Before you, you have the maintenance of the October the 8th meeting, you need a motion to accept the minutes. Motion for Brian Daniel. Second. Second to Michael yeah. McKinney. Is there any discussion, corrections, or additions to the minutes? Any discussion, corrections, or additions? Been none. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed like sign. Minutes are approved. Before you, you have the bills claims, payments, and transfers. Uh, we need a motion also for those. Make a motion to accept the bills and claims. Motion by Brian Daniels. Second by Bo Ben. Any discussion? Any discussion on the bills, claims, payments, and transfers, including the late. Discussion. Thing none. All favor say aye. Aye. Opposed like sign. Minutes are approved. Uh, you have the clerk's 2024 tax rates. Uh, I believe we actually approved those. isn't here, but I'm sure she has it all in order. Motion to approve. Motion by Bo Ben. I'll second this motion. Second by Jason Bullock. Any discussion? Being now, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed like sign. Motion carries. We're doing pretty good right now. I got a feeling it's going to slow down now. We're moving on. But uh, Jason asked me to, and I have no uh, reason not to. We're going to go out of order on our uh, agenda just a little bit. and let Christy Hall make her presentation for Happy Feet. And bring, her, bring your friend with you and okay. introduce her. All righty, thank you. My name is Christy Hall, and I want to thank you all for letting us present our nonprofit organization. Um, a quick story about this, uh, Wendy and I had talked about the need for students in Ohio County to have new socks and just different things and we talked a couple years ago and uh, last year my husband and I went to the cattle sales at Kentucky Ann and I sat down by a fella and he said, um, we talked for a minute and he said, have you heard of happy feet equals learning feet? And I said no and he went on to tell me a little bit about it. And I said, well, you know, I'm a retired teacher, and I know there is a need for shoes, and kids in our county would really appreciate that. And he said, well, when you get home, get online and just look at it. Well, I did, and he was the founder. His name is Jerry Baird, and he is from Union County. <coughs> they have a corporate brochure, and their mission statement is to provide shoes to children in need so they can better focus their efforts on learning and being a teacher. If those students aren't comfortable, then they don't learn as well. When they're sitting around with shoes that hurt their feet or dirty shoes, you know, it's just hard on their self-esteem. And so I went ahead and 
looked through this and there are 19 counties in Kentucky that do this and two in Illinois and one in Indiana. So I, I told Jerry, I called him and I said, you know, I'm interested and I have a friend that I think will co-chair this with me and um, we'd like to meet with all our family resource and have you come down <coughs> and we did. And we started our chapter last year. So we have a brochure that we're passing around this year. And our brochure, um, we have on here, when the shoe fits, happy children become com com comfortable learners. Ohio County Happy Feet working with Ohio County Public Schools. Let's try walking in their shoes. And Ohio County is proud to say that we joined the walk in the fall of 2023. We are happy to report our walk has led to many generous donors that love the children of Ohio County. Myself and Wendy King, along with our family resource of Ohio County, set a goal to raise uh, $10,000. And because of our county pulling together, we surpassed that goal and raised $11,000. Our mission statement for Ohio County is to eliminate one of the stum stumbling blocks to school success. Um, we had these brochures made and we have all the high top runners, $1,000 plus donors listed, gold runners, $300 to $999 and so on down to $25. And this is something if you want your name on here, that's fine. If you don't, that's fine too. Uh, last year, we distributed 263 pairs of shoes to six elementary schools, a middle school, and the high school here in Ohio County. All the money stays here. There's no administrative fees. Nothing goes to pay anybody else. Uh, we also uh, gave 50 plus pairs of socks to students. And um, we have already done some things this year that Wendy's going to tell you about. And our goal for this year is to distribute 500 pairs of shoes. We're hoping around 70 pair to each school, depending on the need. Might vary a little bit. Thank you for y'all's time. Um, Christy pretty much talked on everything, but we are a 501c3, federally recognized tax deductible. There are no administrative fees. We have an accountant, a board of directors, so we are answerable to someone for all these funds. 100% um, is spent, spent in county. We've been very fortunate, Christine and I have been very busy in the year we've established. Um, we've gotten some, lots of private donations, but we also have received some grants. Um, and this school year, we've already placed 122 pairs of shoes on kids' feet. That's just this school year since August. Um, if we could get this sustained and in place, when we have natural disasters like the tornado that happened here, we could have partnered with our resource officers and been able to put shoes on families' feet. This isn't just like a one time during the year, it's also if a student had, or if people in our school system that have um, fires and other things um, that come up as well, we uh, are a branch for our resource officers to put them on there. But that takes funding, and so we would like for y'all to consider making a donation to us if possible. We would appreciate that. It costs about $30 per student to get um, shoes for each student and um, we do have a grant right now with Bomba Socks so we've kind of got the socks taken care of for our next um, drive. And one more thing I want to add is we um, work with all the family resource and if one student at Beaver Dam is getting a pair of shoes and they have a sibling in the middle school or the high school they all we we don't just send one pair and we uh, they get them the day that day, Shoe Sensation partners with us. They bring a box truck with all the shoes, all different sizes, and they get to choose from three or four, five pairs of name brand shoes, and they get to take them that day. Lots of them want to wear them. And uh, we take the, the UPC code off the box so <coughs> parents can't return the shoes, and um, they're very appreciative. I've got a brochure I'm gonna leave with you guys too. Anybody have any questions? And I will say, too, it's, I've worked with them. I had 40 pairs of shoes last year given to me at Beaverdown. Rough, roughly 40. I think 35 to 40 yeah. every school guy. Thank you all were the largest. Um, but Happy Feet's been around for years because my sister's part of it in Madisonville, and it's huge in Madisonville. And we tried it in Ohio County before. It's the people that it never, you know, we'd get eight or ten. But since Wendy and Christy have taken over, 
they, I mean, it's just grown leaps and bounds with how hard they work with it. So, uh, um, you know, instead of getting seven or eight pairs, which is nice, you know, we're getting 30, 40 plus pair of shoes for our kids. And just for example, Beaver Dam Elementary is a probably as far as the lowest income, you know, we're 70%, 70, 60, 65 to 70%. All the other schools are higher than that, free and reduced lunch, so low income. So 40 pairs is awesome. But when you're talking 600 people and you're talking 70% uh, free and reduced lunch kids, and we, all we can use all we can, and they're doing a great job at Happy Feet, I will say that. Well, your feet are your foundation, and you know we need them to start in elementary level having a good foot forward, and we do feel like it does make an impact on their learning. So, thank you, guys. Thanks. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you, uh, gentlemen. Can we look into that discretionary money that we set aside in this? Yeah, the other that uh, community contributions fund. It's right there. What? Well, <laughs> quick. We have money in that account if you wanted to do the 50 or the 100 even, you could do it in Paris. In the brochure, the 1500 or 3000 either way you got enough to do it. I think the, what account is that, Judge? It's if we're, that new account we set up for, uh, look, for community Instead of using discretionary, it comes out of the account we have. Yeah. So I guess we just need to decide if you want to do 1500 how much is in that account? We need to make that in the form of motion. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. I'd like to make a motion that we sponsor 50 pairs at 1500 from our community outreach fund that we says, uh, set up for this year's budget. Do I have a second? I'll second that. Sorry. Second. I got seconds all over the place. So pick one, Doreen. Any further, any further uh, discussion? Being none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed like sign. Motion carries. Uh, I'm going to tell them how to we'll do authorize them. and to write the check. And, yeah, that was in the motion. I'll let her know after me. I'm not going to ask each other how to get the check. Who can see? Uh, now are we back <coughs> on the track? Uh, if any of you guys back there got a uh, agenda, this ordinance 2020-5 maintenance amendment agreement second reading this is about the uh, grass on the on the highways so i I, I, I talked to justin can i i asked for a change please can, go ahead uh, <coughs> the one change that i asked for because it's still not part you know I and mean, i don't know that it's ever gonna be a perfect solution uh but it, it, it talked about siding well, but it didn't say when we start siding or how we start siding. So when I talked to Justin, he kind of recommended this too, is that your first is a, a warning, second offense is a warning, and then after the third offense, that's when you start the, the, the citation, uh, which is the minimal amount. It's not really. <laughs> but it would, uh, it would, it would yeah. kind of give you, instead of citing somebody the first time or not citing somebody the first time, it's kind of up in the air. What you <laughs> did, it needs to be more black and white how you're going to do it. It should mean if somebody talks to anybody that you're doing this wrong, they will straighten out when it's a county official tells you, them. You, and you give them two chances. And like I said, it's not, I don't know that, you know, or you can still change this throughout the way, but I think it's a start. Um, and I don't really want to be out policing, and I want to talk to you guys. I don't really think it's something we need to be out policing. But if it becomes a problem, you can't do anything about it unless you have something in writing. And at least this way, it gives us a way to address that situation if it becomes a problem. And our, uh, our uh, uh, litter abatement guy would be on the, and emergency management director would be on the lookout for it. But most of these enforcements will come, would come from people calling in. <coughs> that's not bad so and it's not an ordinance on its own it's actually we like you said we just placed it inside an ordinance we already had uh, relating to uh, lots and uh, maintenance so uh, is well, that a motion when we when we discussed well we, we need probably a motion I'll make motion. the motion to go ahead the second for we get a second for discussion we got a second uh, yes got a second yeah, okay, now we discuss it. The the when Jason called me and, and, and indicated maybe some you know a warning type of system that what the language that we put in the ordinance. 
is that some may not always follow the, the fiscal court meetings and, and so uh, initially the warning is to let them be made, be made aware of this change and, and the possible change if y'all vote for it, uh, but, but to make them aware of the ordinance and then the uh, uh, second is to uh, certainly indicate that the citations will come. Uh, it's, 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 uh, the, and so that's what the, the ordinance kind of uh, indicates with regard to the language. And I think most people's not out there trying to do something. If they know what's going on, they're going to try to help and indicate. And that's why we don't want. <coughs> but there are some people out there to do things just to spite them. I have a problem with being for this when the county mows roadways and leaves grass, and then we're going to turn around and cite people for the same thing we're doing. We'll, we'll probably do a better job of it ourselves. Yeah, but we haven't been, Judge. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll warn ourselves too. And, and, and that is true, but I mean, we need to chop, chop it. But, and I'm not thinking about it, because there's going to be grass on the road. But we're all going to be, what I'm, we're talking about maybe is a full blanket of grass where they've just mowed their yard and it's just completely covered the road. And you can't, you know, that's, to me, that's unacceptable. I mean, that's just my opinion, but. Can I speak? Yeah. David. I'm sorry. Can I speak? Uh, yes. Yeah. Three minutes. Okay, Larry, when I brought this over here, I didn't bring it over to enforce stuff against the county and the state. Okay, it's, it's individuals mowing their yard and blowing the grass all over the yard. The county and the state, they put a <coughs> sign up. Okay, when that sign is out there, it says mowing zone ahead. Okay, if we're out riding our bikes, we're going to see that sign. We know that that's going on. We're going to slow down. We're going to watch that. Okay? We want a roads mode too. So, I mean, there's nothing that we can do about that. We don't put a sign up. <laughs> I've seen county signs up, says Mowing Ahead, and I've seen state, state signs. We do not put signs up. Then the county needs to put signs up regardless. Yeah. yeah we're, we're going to do better in the way it goes. I think we've discussed it in Miranda Johnson? Yes. Daniel? Yes. Mark you? No. McKinney? Yes. Bullock? Yes. Bennett? Yes. Uh, motion passed. And uh, this is the second reading, so it's now official ordinances in place. And one thing I want to say, it's like any ordinance we ever do. You learn from the process, you know what I mean? I'm not saying this won't be adjusted at times. But we have something in writing to start with, and that's what we get. If you don't have anything in writing, you can't do anything. So this is the start, and we might learn from this. But, I mean, if it keeps somebody safe, that's what we need to do. Yeah, we will publish it in the paper and on the uh, county's uh, website. <coughs> Everywhere we can, we'll publish it that this has been done. Well, thank you all. You're welcome. Yeah, uh, glad to see you guys here. We like we like company in our court meetings. Sometimes we don't have very many, so glad to see you. Uh, next, next, Charter Communications. You come on up and to the mic so they can hear you and introduce yourself and uh, and uh, give us an update on where we are on the internet. Yeah, and I actually have a presentation I can hang up. Yeah, especially when I'm going to get mine. <laughs> <coughs> Thank you so much, Judge and members of the court. Uh, there should be a presentation um, handed out uh, right now to you all. I just wanted to give you guys an update. I met with the judge last month uh, to provide an update from our company. Uh, my name is Dalton Workman. I'm the director of state government affairs for Charter Communications, better known as Spectrum. Um, it's our brand of internet service that we provide. Um, just want to come and give you guys an update with where we are in terms of construction here in the county, in terms of internet expansion. Um, we'll kind of walk through this. I um, want to give you guys a high level overview of what we're dealing with here in the county right now in terms of our construction. We have two phases going on. I mean, I'll kind of walk through and explain uh, what each of those two rounds are. And then our overall construction process, you guys have an idea uh, of what our construction process looks like in terms of hanging fiber and getting activation to your 
to your uh, community. Um, I used to work for the General Assembly before I uh, started with Charter last year, so I know um, from the elected official standpoint, um, when you guys get calls about different issues, you want to be able to give an answer to your constituent. Uh, constituents, so I want to be a resource for you all as you get those uh, questions or comments. Uh, my contact info is in that presentation. Uh, please don't hesitate to email or, or call me with any questions or concerns you may have. Um, if you want to turn to slide two of the presentation here, um, in, the, in the county we have a two phases of our broadband expansion right now. Um, so during, as you all know from many counties I and mean, communities across the state and country, um, a lot of federal dollars, state dollars have come down from COVID. Uh, <coughs> excuse me, related uh, projects from the federal and state government. Um, one of the things that Kentucky has prioritized over the last few years is broadband expansion, connecting those last mile homes, um, connecting our rural communities. Um, earlier in 2000, uh, late 2021, early 2022, the federal government through the NTIA um, had their own federal program called, called RDOP, that stands for Rural Digital Opportunity Fund. That's the first uh, phase that you see here that says in progress. Um, this was a uh, project identified by the federal government for the mapping that they had at the time and identified census blocks of folks that were considered underserved or unserved. So underserved, their definition were folks that had access to internet, but obviously it doesn't meet the standards for people to be able to work remotely from home or do basic functions of internet at the house. And then um, that project was designed to also cover unserved, which are obviously individuals who have no internet at all. Um, so our company, um, through a bid process, won the bid for uh, RDOP here in the county. That first phase is ongoing right now. That is around 1,500 addresses um, that we were awarded through that project through the NTIA. Um, and that's ongoing right now. Uh, one thing I will note here, if you look, if you look at the total amounts here, these addresses will be likely more that we connect to um, in all these phases. So as we're building out through a community, whether it be in a city or rural area, um, if we're going down the street or in the <coughs> and we see addresses that are on our list that we were awarded. We obviously have to build the those, um, but if we also come up onto a cul-de-sac or a subdivision or an area out in the county that makes sense and we're able to reach on our own dime, we'll build out to that area as well. Um, so this is kind of the, uh, the, the, the floor um, for how many people we'll be building to, likely a lot higher. Um, as we get through the construction process, I'll be able to give you guys a kind of better update as we get out um, who, who additional and what additional addresses we'll be able to add. Um, so part of that RDOF right now, we're building those 1,500 addresses. Right now we've activated approximately 200. Um, the company and the initial investment from the federal government, that project itself, that round is around $6.3 million investment for expansion. The second uh, phase of the project that, that will be starting very soon is the state grant round two. Um, so as I mentioned a few moments ago, the state um, has appropriated uh, money to create the Office of Broadband. Um, which have then been appropriating funds that the General Assembly um, has passed um, for internet expansion to build out and to connect those remaining homes across the state. Um, here in the county, we were awarded 627 addresses uh, for that project. And, and so that, that we are currently in the design process, which I'll explain in a minute, kind of our phases that we have in construction. But these are the two waves that we have right now um, ongoing for the county through our company. Um, I will say there is a likelihood that the, um, there was a new funding coming through called BEAD that you may have heard through some of your conferences. That's a, a billion dollars coming from the federal government to the states. Um, the General Assembly um, passed this session in the budget, uh, which will basically, that designs to fill in any remaining gaps in Ohio County and all across the state. Um, that billion dollars for Kentucky is designed to do that. So that will be another round that the county will likely be able um, to have. That will be another process where companies like ours, other internet service providers um, can bid for those locations. We expect, um, having conversations with the broadband office, that that uh, portal and that process should open um, early next year. Um, so hopefully by the time we get to December of 2025, we'll be able to kind of um, know where those um, addresses for the county stand in terms of that round. Um, and like I said, we'll, we'll likely be applying for those as well as, as other providers. Um, so that's kind of forward looking um, in terms of additional opportunities. If you turn to slide three, um, this is kind of the three pages, and I'm sorry about the presentation. My printer of all days decided it was going to kind of throw up on the page, so there's a nice little line going through the page. Uh, but our construction process goes in three phases. Um, the first phase, after we get an award from the federal government or the state or local, if we have a local deal, uh, we have to do the design and walkout. And you'll see on the phases here what, what round is within which phase. Um, and so we do initial walkouts. When we get awarded the RDOP project, for example, uh, our, our guys flood the community and where we were awarded. A lot of times you'll hear an announcement and then you'll see trucks. People get excited thinking, oh, it's here now. 
lot of time that's just us walking out. Um, almost 90% of our projects in Kentucky are aerial, which we call the utility pole. Um, and so before we're able to, do, to get into the field and submit permits for attachment, we physically walk out each um, award that we have. So we're going out, we're counting poles, we're doing surveys on our own to see if those poles uh, will stand a, another line, if it needs to be a pole that's replaced, which I'll get to momentarily. So we have a complete walkout is the first part of the project. And then once the walkout and design is complete, uh, we'll then package that up and then we submit to poll owners for attachment. So we have to receive attachment approvals from the poll owners in your county for us to be able to hang fiber. Um, and this is kind of where we could see um, hang up and slow down in our construction process. Prior to all the money that came down from the state and the federal government, just speaking for our company, uh, we may submit prior to all this money a few hundred polls, maybe a thousand a year statewide uh, to poll owners for attachment for various needs. Uh, but since all the funding that has come down, uh, we have been inundating poll owners with poll attachment requests, county by county across the state. And, and in many instances, it has really overloaded our local co-op friends. It's overloaded our investor-owned utility companies. And so we've really seen a backlog develop over the last year, year and a half, almost two years with our poll attachment issues. Uh, we actually took these concerns to the General Assembly this year, uh, thanks in part to your senator and your state representative uh, legislation was passed uh, this last session um, that would require the Public Service Commission to kind of get involved with this process um, because they regulate our utility companies to help kind of expedite the poll permitting challenges that we're seeing across the state. Uh, we're currently in that process right now. And I will say that poll permitting conditions are improving. We're starting to build a lot faster, and I'll get to that here in just a second for Ohio County. Um, but statewide here to date, we've received more permits back from poll owners than we had in all of 2023. Um, so the permitting challenges are starting to get better. Um, obviously, we'd like them to go quicker, um, but, but that's just kind of where we're at right now. Uh, once we get the permitting back um, from the poll owner, then the fund starts begin for us, which is construction. Uh, taking a step back to our design, we break out your community and your county into different construction boundaries. We usually put around 150 to 200 addresses in each boundary, and so we submit poll applications by those boundaries. And then as we get appro approval by those uh, construction boundaries, then we start building. So we don't wait until the whole county is built before we activate. Uh, once we get a construction boundary completed, we then activate. Um, so as soon as we are able to get those done, we start activating as we go along the line. Uh, but generally speaking, once we get permits back, on the short end, three months is usually what it will take for us to knock out a construction boundary. Obviously, weather permitting, it's not been a good year for farmers with the dry weather, but it's been pretty good for broadband. So if we have good weather that uh, cooperates with us, um, usually on the low end, we can get done in that area within three months. On the high end, six months. But like I said, it all depends on where we're able to get these poll permits back um, from poll owners. Any questions on that, on that phase there on how we kind of get through construction? Uh, we'll look at uh, page four, and I'll send this around. Yep. What, what's your timeline on the design and walkout? So generally, design and walkout just depends on when we get the uh, when we get the award. So for example, last fall uh, we got the second uh, grant round from the state. And if you actually look on page four here, yeah. um, this will show you kind of where we're at um, in terms of uh, locations in the county. And I'll email you guys this as well, uh, so it's a little more clear for you. And it'll be a Google Earth. Uh, file that you can actually zoom in and look and see the specific addresses based off of the areas you represent. But for example, that, to answer your question, if you look on here, the red dots uh, were physical locations that we were awarded by the state last fall. That's in design right now. Generally, that takes around three to four months of design and walk just depending on the size and scope of the project. Uh, with this being around 627 passages, we're, we're almost done with that. Uh, we actually, uh, we kind of get ahead of the state sometimes uh, once we've been awarded a project. So we actually just got the uh, state contract signed this week. Um, from the state on that, and so hopefully we'll be very soon submitting those permits um, to get that in the process with your poll owners so we can go ahead and get those attachments. <coughs> um, but again, looking at slide four, um, as I just mentioned, those item areas in red were what we were awarded last fall from the state. Those areas in blue um, is that RDOF project I mentioned that we are currently building right now. So any area on this map that you see in blue, well, we are building to. Um, that, that was on that, the uh, FCC's map and the NTIA's map at that time. I'm happy to pull um, data for the exact address list because obviously homes get built in between these rounds and so um, those are conversations we'll need to have with those areas. But at the time that this is awarded, any area, um, any address that's within these blue areas are being, are being built to by us right now. You turn to slide five. Uh, 
where we currently are in the phase, RDOF is the only area right now that we are building right now. Um, and if you look at the map here, the areas that you see in yellow where we are actively building, I passed some folks um, actually on the way in, some of our guys <coughs> south of Beaver Dam. So we're currently building in three construction boundaries in the southern part of the county right now. And then the area in green um, off of Highway 62, we have activated earlier this year, and that's those 200 passings um, or addresses um, that you saw at the beginning of the slide here. Um, but like I said, this process here just takes time for us once we get the permits back um, for our guys to go out and, and, and like I said, do our aerial attachments. Um, so that's just kind of a quick high level overview of, of the project, the two rounds that we have here in the county and happy to take any questions. And if I don't have an answer for you, um, I'll, I'll give my construction team um, to get you an exact answer. Okay. Uh, I'm in the 4th District and that's the north end of Ohio County, okay. uh, Highway 54. Okay. So I'm looking right now and it looks like that was approved through state grant round two. Mm -hmm. And so you're... You're about to send the permit up on it. I'm just trying to get time. Yeah, I was sure. active to see. The yeah, like yeah. So we, we're we're nearing the permit submission part of that phase. Okay. Um, so the two, uh, the state grant um, has a state deadline um, of completion by the end of 2026. Um, obviously, we want to get that done a lot sooner than that. Yeah. Um, so I would say the best answer right now is 2026 is the construction deadline. Okay. Uh, for the state grant. Yep. You're saying construction deadline. That the state has so in the areas you see in red here, yeah. That this, the state has a deadline for those for those addresses to be completed by the end of twenty six. <coughs> red. Okay. Mm -hmm. And going back to that, the yep. uh, RDOF has a little bit in my area, mm -hmm. and uh, what kind of deadline do you get? So this one is twenty twenty seven. Uh, when okay. I say that, most 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 courts are going to go. Well, that's a long ways away. Um, It'll be sooner than that. Okay. Um, if that's just the deadline that the federal government has that they initiated when we first got awarded that project. So 2027 is a deadline on that one. So what about the poles? You're talking about the poles because I keep hearing things about 2,000 poles need to replace before you can get started. So I mean, that's quite an undertaking to replace that many. So it, it depends, and I can get an update from my construction manager, kind of where we are in the county in terms of what we think poles need to be replaced on our end. Um, sometimes we'll go out, we'll do survey work, and then the, then the pole underneath that the, the pole can actually support another mm -hmm. another strand. Um, so sometimes that does that does fluctuate somewhat. I can get specific numbers for you. Um, but on our end, when we submit submit these attachment requests to the pole owners, they go out and verify the verify the work, and then they go out and do it. So we're not in the electric business. Yeah. Um, and so they go out and do the pole replacement that we pay them for those services. And so um, in terms of specific numbers in the county, I'd have to get my construction manager on that. Uh, but it, it, is, it, is, it can be daunting in, in some areas. Is that, I mean, is that have any incentive to get that done? You know what I mean? Other than you pay them to replace the pole, I mean, what's the benefit to them? I, I would argue the benefit to them is that we're, we're, we're replacing their plant for them. You know, we're, we're, we're covering that expense. Uh, you know, as I mentioned, you know, over the last few years, we've really flooded a lot of these pole owners who, a lot of the co-ops are, you know, they're, they're, they're small groups. Um, they're, they're not as big as some of our investor-owned guys, and so there are a lot of them are just underwater with a lot of these construction uh, permit challenges that we're having. Um, but I will say that they had a lot better over the last six to eight months. Um, the states got involved, um, having great conversations. Uh, another thing I did mention that the legislature passed this session is um, they, they appropriated funds for temporary workers. So our uh, investor-owned utilities and co-ops can apply for reimbursement funds to hire temporary folks to help come in and help expedite. See, them. that's kind of why we're slowing down. But if you can't get those replaced, you can't do anything. Yeah. How are we going to get those replaced that quickly? Yeah. If you get yeah. those replaced quickly, then we can start moving along. That's right. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Okay, well, I appreciate it. And sure. We uh, have your contact information, I guess, if we need. Absolutely. It, I know the biggest question a lot of folks will have, they'll, they'll, they'll get the glossy press releases sometimes saying, you know, big project coming to the county, but the question is, am I, am I included? Um, if you have any of those questions, you know, feel free, you know, by magisterial district or however you prefer, you know, feel free to send those to me. Happy to look up those addresses to see where they're at. I can tell you if they're already serviced, if they're in our, one of our two phases, or if possibly they, they could be in that next round that could happen next year. Okay. Well, we've got a long way to go, but we just want to see progress. Sure, absolutely. And we've been pretty frustrated with not being able to give people answers. Yep. Uh, one other quick question. You guys acquired Broadlink, right? Spectrum. Did you? In the process. In the process? Okay. Well, like, City of Fordsville had a franchise agreement with them. Mm -hmm. Will you honor that? That's a great question. I'm going to give you the wrong answer, but I'll find out for you. Okay. And I've got business cards right here if you'd like my contact yeah, absolutely. information. I'll hang around to after the meeting as well. Okay. Yep. All right. Well, thank you all very much for your time and look forward to, uh, to partnering with you all and continue to give you updates as we move forward.
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Just from the office. As you remember, our last meeting we accepted the bid on the dump truck. Uh, and tonight we need to pass a resolution to allow the financing of that through KCO. And, and I'm going to still stick with the term financing. They call it a lease agreement, but we need to pass that resolution. So I wasn't here last, last meeting, so real quick, is that is that similar to what are we lease and then resell it? And, or is that Sim we're Similar, but not exactly. <coughs> this is a three year, okay. and we're guaranteed half of the money back. Okay, similar, but we're yeah. keeping it over through three years. Right. Right. And instead of paying for it all up front, we're paying for half of it in this thing, and yeah. the sales will pay the other half. So the payments are only based on the half of it. Okay, let me ask you a question, one more question. Why Why do we do it over three years then instead of one year? Is That's what's coming It's, company it's, the it's just the new. It's, it's not the same truck that we do that with. Uh -huh. We're still doing it with that one. It's just a, another right. okay. additional truck. So these, are, these, these are single axles. The tri-axles one we do. Right. Yeah. Okay. So we're still going to do that too. We're just going to. That's, okay. Yeah. But that's tw uh, resolution twenty twenty five dash eight. Need a motion. Motion. Motion by Bob Ben. Second. Second by Larry Morphy. Is there any further questions? Ben none. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed like sign. Motion carries. <coughs> I just because then we did an annual one, so I didn't think that's the uh, You have a resolution. <coughs> this this is all good stuff. Larry, this, I mean, uh, Jason, this is in your district. Uh, resolution 2025 9 is Sanford's Crossing. It's a uh, huge culvert being replaced by a contact bridge. And uh, we uh, have the funded. It's 80-20, but our 20% comes from our uh, work. <coughs> so I'll make a motion. I think that the, Larry and I might share that vote. We're on, he's on one side and I'm on the other. Yeah, yeah so I'll make a motion to accept that. Okay, I'll I'll second. Second by, by Larry. I think the water runs off of, uh, off of Jason on to Larry. That's what, we got plenty, that's what we've got worked out. <laughs> in, in discussion on that, being now on first, say aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign. Motion carries. I need you all to sign this, please. So. Everybody has signed that one. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> uh, the next thing. I want to tell you a story while you're signing. Okay, <coughs> it's a fiction or not? <laughs> yeah, that's that's what I'm doing. Yeah. This is part of my story. I'm not gonna have to read it though. I've got it memorized. Uh, we have a uh, fire station substation in Horse Springs, Kentucky, and it's been there a few years, uh, and it's functioning well. But we had a fire station without a fire plug to fill up their uh, to fill up the, their uh, tanks off, the trucks on. So that that's not a very good thing. So what we're proposing is to put a fire plug in for them. <coughs> Does every fire station have one except Horse Branch? Uh, I'm not sure, but I think so. Yeah. That's something, I mean, I'm not opposed, I think it's a great idea if they have one, but that's something, if it's, if there's another, we might need to look into it too, you know, to kind of help them out. Uh, we will, we'll look into that. Uh, but anyway, we have the funds, I'm, I'm stuttering before I tell you the amount, because the prices have gone up on these tremendously, and there is a road goer involved in it. Uh, $16,955.17. But we have money in our water line expansion. We checked out we have adequate funds there. And the good news is, even though not completely, our list is going to be nearly wiped out on our water lines by this uh, transfer of the grant money. It's going to take care of most of it. 
Why, <coughs> can I ask you, why is it just a fire? Why, or why is it so high? To me, that sounds high, but I mean. I think we need to check in or maybe take some bids because I believe we can beat that price. Oh, well, Michael said they had to bore under the road. Maybe bore that's under the road's part of it. Okay. Uh, but uh, we what they can get that done. The, the residents in that area, members of that fire station, have been talking to us pretty right about. It. I don't know of any other way you go about it, Larry, except through our water district. Well, there's all kinds of people putting bar hydrants, Judge. Okay, you want to do it? Be state approved. Okay. And the water district don't do it. They sub it out. They do. They don't do it. The well, you want to wait and. It's your district. You want to wait and. Uh, no, I think we need to put it in, but I think we need to take bids for it. That's what I mean. Yeah. I'm okay for the project. I will. I mean, that's a, it's Larry's district, so he can do what he can. But I mean, I'm okay with the project. Well, you want to pass it pending and see if you can get a better price? Sure. Make that motion. Motion by Larry Morphew. Second, I uh, hear. For the project? Yeah. You I'll second, second the motion. Second by Jason. And the motion is I'm paraphrasing what <coughs> I was saying. He moved to do the project. Not to exceed this. Not to exceed this. Yeah. But yeah. if he can find a cheaper price, he will. And authorized to write check and do it. Authorized and write check it to another person other than our district. Yeah. Do we have another copy of this or can you get it so I can give you this copy? Yes, I can over Here you go, Larry. It's, I'm going to circle the amount here so you're not. A fire hydrant costs about six, seven thousand dollars. Yeah. I eight. circled that there at the total price, and the know. second page over here don't mean anything. So just just the subsection off of this it did, from another venue. Uh, it did five or six years ago. We haven't well, done one in a long time. They've gone so much. Like I said, when we first started, it was like four thousand. Yeah. And then it's gone. It's almost doubled or more. So, yeah, it's like it's yeah. doubled. And there is a road board there, pretty long. That's to go, they'll put it down there, Larry, in the corner of their parking lot, down there right by the station. And that would right be able to get the, the, no, on the store across, across the street. Across the driveway, over right. by the right parking lot. They'll hook onto it up over the caboose, but they'll bring it on down there, drill it in. You got that, Miranda? You did okay. You sure that was your design you stuck on there? <laughs> her hand's so little I can't tell which finger she lifts and up she sure be her mind. Um, I'm just gonna let him keep that if you want to. You can keep that if you want to. Uh, uh, Ann, will you run something in the paper on that? I'm actually going to let you well, count, you know, but I'm going to count the committee before. Oh, she, she does. Okay. She does. There. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, that's going to be the first thing in the committee report. Miranda, you're up. Uh, Miranda's got something to tell you about her cybersecurity grant. Okay, uh, we're going to be taking bids. I put it in the paper. Uh, so at the next meeting on November 19th, we need a 4 o'clock bid opening committee. Who wants to volunteer to come in for that for, uh, from the court? On the what? Nobody jumped. Cyber security. <laughs> no, yeah, I was joking. Cyber, cyber security, security on November 19th. It's for our next fiscal okay, on 19th. You said you could? Yeah. Yeah. Both of them. All right. That's taken care of. Let's move on to other committee reports. Michael, I'm going to start with you on the big meeting you had a couple days ago. Okay. We, uh, we met with the Ohio, <coughs> Ohio County Bellfield Committee. Uh, maybe some people may know as Landfield Committee. Uh, we, we met and talked about the uh, current agreement, uh, we discussed two things that we may be wanting to look into for our next agreement. Uh, we're looking at the contractual agreements in regards to the amount that's paid per tonnage to the county and whether or not we're getting the uh, fair current rate for that and uh, looking into changes we'd make for the new contract and taking a look at the funding that we're receiving now versus 
what we've received in the past, and so forth, uh, and all that based on tonnage as of right now. And then some other things that we're looking at as far as um, days and times that we would want the uh, community to be better served, and we're looking into making those changes. So if anyone has any input, they can get with us, and we'll know more as it progresses. And when is the contract up on that, uh, Mike? Uh, I don't have the date here. Um, Should be, in, I think, the latter part of 27. Yeah. The latter part of 27, 27. I think. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It was a really run. It's going to run out here in a few years. And then also, I think, Mike, you said we need to look into it and see if under the contract we have, if it's been followed all the way. Yes, and we've been and we were we were looking at specifics, and uh, we're looking into those. Thank you. Is there did any other committees meet? Our white scale committee met. Okay. I'm going to pass out something if you want to take it, and pass it down. Uh, not last meeting, but the meeting before last, Sheriff Rod came to us and asked about uh, increases for his deputies. You know, we've lost a lot to SROs, the schools, and other places, and I, and I, and I can see why I have to pay. Uh, so we looked into it. We worked, uh, Bo and I met with um, Ann Milton, and who else, who was the, uh, Doug, yeah. I think his last name. From the Sheriff's yes. Office. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. And we, we, we sat down and talked about it. We figured out a way to, this year, because the sheriff's office never really fully staffs a whole full year anyway. There, there's transfers in and out. There's enough money in there this year to address the raises for this year. We would just have to vote tonight to say we're going to go ahead and do it for next year in the budget. And if you look on the paper I handed out to you, if there is a there is a it tells you on the bottom line how we are going to fund uh, next year uh, raises in the budget. And it's the emergency service fund established using the, the occupational tax we increased several years back. And um, that's how we would generate the funds to cover the expenses um, for the uh, sheriff deputy raises. And the raises, if you look at the top, it tells you how much it would increase, $80,499. But that's also has the FICA and retirement benefits in it too. Mm -hmm. uh, after we looked, we just feel like we could comfortably manage this year out of reserves and what he has left in his budget. And then come budget time, we would have to vote in. And we think that by looking at what the uh, additional occupational tax for the emergency service management, there's plenty of money to cover that raise. And um, I know that this isn't probably popular with some people because not, we're not getting everybody, but you know, we are losing deputies. You have to train them. And it's not the easiest job because we don't ask all the other jobs to take a gun or go to somebody's house that could have a gun. Or it's, a, it's, it's, it's a tough job. So we want to make sure that we at least get them up to what the SROs are making in the school. And uh, at least, you know, we want to be higher, if not higher, around what the city of Beaver Dam and uh, Hartford are paying because we're losing for competition there. They go to Hartford and Beaver Dam. So I feel like um, we should do this. Like I said, there's enough funding there this year to cover the raises in his own budget from people that's not there. Next year, we would have to use the uh, uh, emergency fund, and there's plenty of money in there to do the raises for next year when we set the budget. And I would like to go in the emergency services fund with the additional quarter percent we put on the occupational tax uh, several years ago. I would like to go ahead and make that in motion to allow um, Sheriff Adam Wright to make those increases to his deputies and for us to promise that if he needs the money or the funding that we will budget the money in the next year's budget for this. So I'll make that in the form of a motion. To have a second. Second. second to vote in. I got a question. Okay. We're going to move 80000 from the fuel purchase. No. How are we going to replace that? Ann, can you explain that one? Well, we would 
we would budget him 80000 in the emergency services fund for fuel. So that's going to free up 80000 in the general fund budget to do these races. What are we going to do for that, though, in case you need this money? Well, we're, you're flip-flopping the money is basically what you're doing. Yeah, that, that really made it, that little thing there could make it confusing. It's and very I understand confusing. It, but it's, uh, no. it's the same as if it was coming directly from the... If you reduce his fuel by $80,000 in the general fund, if you lessen that amount, then you can increase the payroll. So then the question becomes, where does he get $80,000 for his fuel? That would be in the emergency services fund. So you're just paying for the gas out of the emergency services fund instead of paying for it out of the general fund. <coughs> so the $80,000 we have in the general fund for the gas now, it would go towards the raises. Right. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm forward. I'm just yeah. curious yeah. about the fuel. Okay. Any more discussion? And I, and, I, and I want people to know, even as, as much as we do now, you know, we're still... It's, they still could be paid more, you know, when you're asking right. somebody to. Yeah. It's, uh, it's not, their, they're not too high, that's for sure. No, and, and, and this court has done, the last three years has done really good. In the last three years, we've raised all county employees to the point of 17%, and that's a pretty good little increase over a three-year period. And we continue to hopefully to raise, you know, with the, the CPI, if we can, this next year budget for the, uh, yeah, the when all the CPI goes up 9%, we really need to try to match it. Yeah, uh, we, and, we, and we've done that in the past, so we want to continue to try to do that. But at this time right now, we want to address the deputies at the because, like I said, we're losing them to other agencies, we're losing them to schools, so we want to make sure that we're paying as high, if not equivalent, to everybody else. And it would be effective uh, November 3rd, too. Okay. Roll call. Johnson? Yes. Daniel? Yes. Morphew? Yes. McKinney? Yes. Bullock? Yes. Bennett? Yes. That's a done deal. Like I said, uh, we would like to do more for all the employees, but that was a, that that kind of made sense to do it, do this, and uh, we're losing deputies, and we should have want to do that, so uh, maybe now we'll be good for a while, and uh, so that motion passed. That's all I have. Okay. Uh, I'll come back to the magistrates. I'm going to go ahead and ask the county uh, officials first. Well, actually, he's gone. I thought Landon had something for us. Yeah, you got a call. Okay. Well, we'll come. Let's go the way we always do it then. Let's go to the magistrates first, and then we'll come back to county officials. Michael. Uh, that's all I had for the first district and the county was the landfill committee. Okay. Jason. Uh, you know, nothing. I wasn't here at the last meeting, so I'd like to get some information on I, you, what was going on in Greenberg County. You know, I didn't, I, I kind of, I don't know the whole story. Okay. Well, you know, I know we're not acting on it at the moment. I'm, I'm glad you asked because I'm yeah. going to appoint a committee to look into that. And since you inquisitive, you've already appointed you, it. Do what? You've already appointed the committee. Yeah, you already Did I? I'm yeah. sorry. Last week. I mean, You're last on it, meeting. aren't you? Uh, yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We already got a committee. Well, I'll challenge. Well, and I'm just asking. I'd like to get some information. So well, I don't I know what it was. I, I challenge the committee to meet before the next meeting. I'm sorry. I'm, glad, I'm sorry. I forgot. <coughs> uh, Did you put somebody at the head of the committee to do that? It was Rip, I think. Rip? I did Rip, and Rip got sick. That's why it hasn't happened yet. Yeah. Rip is not well. He's sick. Really concerned about him. Uh, so, uh, who else was on the committee? Do uh, you remember, Miranda? It's in the minutes. I'm going through it. I'm going through it. She's trying to ask him. What was the name of it? The uh, Paradise, Paradise, Paradise Park. Oh, okay. Rip Roy and Mel Michael and Brian Daniel. Okay, okay. Who's Michael? Was Michael Kenny? Yeah. And Brian. Uh, Michael, uh, Chen, why don't you see if you can get a meeting just before the next one? Same so, one you have at 4 o'clock before the next court And meeting. if that's okay, I mean, because three, we, we won't have a quorum. <coughs> we can't make a decision, can we? Is that right? If three goes in, that's okay. No, it's going to be more than two. You probably need to advertise that. Okay, well, I was just kind of wondering if that's set in there because I didn't know. Yeah, you can. 
Yeah. Okay. Okay. Anything else, Jason? No. Well, thank you. Um, no, nothing at this time. Okay. Brian? Yeah, I, I got a little bit to say. Uh, this could possibly be my last meeting at, uh, as a magistrate on the fiscal court as I'm coming up for election uh, in a couple weeks. But I will say I'm glad that I've got to serve my district and the county and uh, hope to be here in the future. I've, I've enjoyed my time here and uh, I encourage everybody to use your exercise to go out and vote. That's awesome. Well, uh, well, you've been. Uh, I hope. I hope you've learned uh, good things from us. I hope. And maybe you. If, if you're not back, you've learned something about being with us. We've learned something from you. And Larry, I know you've got something. Uh, did you hear the report on Billboard? I got a couple of things. I would uh, ask everybody to remember former. Magistrate Bill Burden in your prayers. He didn't get a good report from the doctor of the day. His, uh, he didn't get a good report at all. So we need to remember him, lift him and his family up in prayer. Yeah. And on Salem, we there's a project going to be going on putting uh, what is a little subdivision in uh, uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, a little road it's a, mobile home, huh? And it meets qualifications. It's point one seven three tenths of a mile. And the name of it is Trump Lane. <laughs> and I'd like to make a motion if we take that in because it meets the county specs. Okay. The viewing committee's done. They've been there. And and we're not going to do any work on it at any time soon. Uh, we needed to get it into the road system so to qualify for a water line. So that'll be the next thing we'll talk about. Do I hear a second? Second by vote. Any further discussion? Do we want to hold off on that road and just see how the election turns out before we try <laughs> <laughs> uh, no. The paperwork's not final, so if y'all need to rename it in the next two weeks, you just let me know. We'll amend it. Uh, 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 I was about to say, I told like that, post it back. No, I'll Justin. No, Judge, thank you. Uh, <laughs> Sheriff's Office, anything? Okay. No other county officials have anything? Anybody from the general public got anything for the good body? Yeah. Judge, I do. I just want to let the magistrates know that we have turned dirt for the um, school board. I asked they've been turned dark, dark quickly. Yes. And um, for our new school board and new school board office at uh, 231 or South toward uh, at Sunbeam now. Um, so uh, there'll be a lot of traffic in out there. We could have got a water line or gas line. Um, they kind of try to sell some more property out there. But uh, right now, the exciting thing is we are moving forward with our uh, board office and <coughs> which was, is desperately needed. Are you going to be able to get the city sewer hooked up to it? I have no idea. That work, that is, Hawkins and Abney is who's taking care of that. Jason, do you know? I'm sorry, I wasn't. Will there be a city sewer there? Bo, distract me. No, but the school board sees sewer up to it. So nobody really knows. I hope so. Well, the city sewer runs right beside it, so I feel like that. But I don't think it's in the county. Or in, in the uh, city. Well, it's not in the city. It doesn't the have road. to be from hook it up. Yeah. But yeah, it, it's that land is there. not in the city. I'm sure they'll work something out because the sewer runs right beside it. I'm sure they'll probably already deal worked out. Okay. Okay. If there is, I haven't heard that. Because you can pay. I've got residents in a neighborhood up across from the cemetery. Uh, the cemetery the, uh, nursing home, that's not very good. But the nursing home that they actually have hooked into the uh, sewer from there, too, on their own expense. And if you're right there, it's not that expense going ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Appreciate it. Uh, anybody else got anything for the good of the court before we dismiss? Being that we are now dismissed. We'll be back on uh, the 19th. 19th.